the chair the chair would like to recognize the gentleman from Westmoreland County Mr. Reese Thank you Mr. Chief Clerk First I would like to wish all of my colleagues and uh, all of their guests a very happy and blessed new year and as it has been done for generations Mr. Chief Clerk, it is my honor to present a resolution for the election of Speaker. The gentleman from Westmoreland, Mr. Reese, presents a resolution which the clerk will read. In the House of Representatives, January 3, 2017, resolved that in accordance with the provisions of Article 2, Section 9 of the Constitution of Pennsylvania, the House do now proceed to the election of a Speaker. On the question, Will the House agree to the resolution? Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the resolution is adopted. Nominations are now in order for the office of Speaker. The chair recognizes the lady from Bradford County, Ms. Pickett. Thank you, Mr. Chief Clerk. Mr. Chief Clerk, as we sit here in this magnificent chamber this afternoon and celebrate the beginning of our 201st legislative session, we also appear here today ready to tackle the challenging issues that lie ahead. And I can think of no better person to lead this chamber through the next two years. He's a man of great character and tremendous dedication. He has the innate ability to buckle down to solve our state's most pressing challenges. And that is why today I rise to nominate the Honorable Michael C. Terzai as Speaker of this House. Fellow members, Mike and I were members of the class of 2000, a group of 13 members and only four of us remain here today. Over the past 16 years, we have fought together for many priorities aimed at making Pennsylvania a better place to live, to work, and to raise our families. Leadership is a gift, and it was apparent 16 years ago that Mike was a man of great talent who would quickly take the reins of responsibility to pull us in the right direction for Pennsylvania. Mike was friendly, upbeat, energetic, and encouraging. I liked and admired him from our very first meeting. And it soon became clear Mike possessed a level of determination, one that I haven't seen before and don't see since. He simply doesn't give up, no matter how difficult a task or policy issue may be. Part of what makes Mike such an outstanding leader and policymaker is his genuine interest in knowing every corner of Pennsylvania and the people who live there. Mike has spent time in the Northeast, and he takes the time to listen to and impart the thoughts of our citizens into our lawmaking decisions. Our districts are quite different. He's from the suburbs, and my area is very rural. There's a reason we call it the Endless Mountains. You would think the differences would stand out, but not to Mike. He sees the similarities and the shared goals, and he focuses on those issues to help bring us, as a legislative body, as well as the people of the Commonwealth together. We all want good jobs. We all want good health care. We all want good schools and an educational system that allows our students to succeed. And we all want to be able to call Pennsylvania home now and for generations to come. That's Mike. Another quality that makes him the best possible person to stand before us and lead us as a chamber for the next two years is his ability to be fair. While a man of solid convictions, Mike listens to all, gives a voice, and facilitates a final position that moves Pennsylvania forward. That attribute cannot be understated as we face the challenges before us. Oh, surely there will be times in this chamber that tempers will flare because we're all very passionate about our beliefs and our goals for making Pennsylvania better. But Mike is the one who will reason with both sides make a ruling that no matter where you sit on this floor will be fair. This isn't an easy job, 
and the time we spend here is away from our families and our homes. He understands that as much as anyone because he values the time he's able to spend with his own family. As Lydia, Andrew, Stephen, and Matthew sit with us here today, I want them all to know that we and all of Pennsylvania are so very lucky to have their husband and their father lead us in this chamber. That is why I rise today to nominate Michael C. Terzai as Speaker of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives for the 201st Legislative Session. Thank you, Mr. Chief Clerk. The lady from Bradford County, Ms. Pickett, places in nomination for Office of Speaker the gentleman from Allegheny County, the Honorable Mike Terzai. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Allegheny County, Mr. Reedshaw. Thank you, Mr. Chief Clerk. On this day, it is proper that we recognize the nominee, Representative Michael Terzai, for Speaker of the House and for his continued dedication and commitment to the House of Representatives and to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. As he was unanimously elected Speaker of the House on January 6, 2015, we have seen him grow in that position and accordingly, we feel confident he will continue to grow in that direction. I believe that coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, working together is success, and I know in communicating with Speaker Terzai, he shares in that belief. I am honored and appreciate the opportunity to stand today for my colleague from Allegheny County and second the nominating motion for the Honorable Michael Terzai as Speaker of this House of Representatives of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Thank you, Mr. Chief Clerk. The gentleman from Allegheny County, Mr. Reedshaw, seconds the nomination of Mike Terzai for the Office of Speaker. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Chester County, Mr. Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Chief Clerk. Colleagues, congratulations on your election. With my special regards to each of the freshmen, welcome. Mr. Chief Clerk, the role of speaker of this Pennsylvania House of Representatives is the oldest elected leadership, legislative leadership position in North America. The Charter of Privileges granted by our founder, William Penn, on October 28, 1701, specifically mentions the role of the Speaker. The Speaker is the literal and figurative leader of this chamber, the House of the People. There is not a majority Speaker, nor a minority Speaker. There is but one Speaker, for all the members. Today, the good gentleman from Allegheny County from the 28th Legislative District is before us. He has taken his place amongst the distinguished list of individuals who have led this chamber with honor and dignity in an unbroken chain dating all the way back to 1683. The challenges facing this General Assembly over the coming days are significant. Each of us has been called to faithfully represent the people of this great commonwealth in these times marked by difficulty, promise, and opportunity. And just as each member is to serve his or her constituents, so too must the speaker serve this chamber, ensuring each member has the opportunity to be heard so that each Pennsylvanian has the opportunity to be heard. Mr. Chief Clerk, over the past 10 years, I've seen the gentleman from Allegheny in good times and in difficult times. And I've seen him over the past two years preside over this chamber in a fair and even-handed manner, even in challenging circumstances. No man is perfect, but I believe the gentleman to be a man of uncommon character and decency. With all of this in mind, Mr. Chief Clerk, I second the nomination of the good gentleman, my friend, Mike Torzai, for Speaker of the House. May God bless and guide him and this house in the days ahead.
The gentleman from Chester County, Mr. Lawrence, seconds the nomination of Mike Terzai for the office of speaker. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Philadelphia, Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Mr. Chief Clerk. Mr. Chief Clerk, let me extend a heartfelt welcome to family, friends, loved ones, and significant others from all parts of Pennsylvania to the People's House. This is the People's House, and we're honored to have you here today. I rise, Mr. Chief Clerk, to close the nominations for Speaker of the 201st Legislative Term. And uh, Mr. Speaker, I think we've heard all that we've needed to hear. We've witnessed all that we have needed to see because we know that our nominee has served as Speaker and managed difficult and good times of this August body. And so, Mr. Speaker, I rise to close the nomination and move that by acclamation that we select the Honorable Michael Terzai as the Speaker of the 201st Legislative Term. Year ye, year ye. Thank you. The gentleman from Philadelphia, Mr. Thomas, moves that nominations now be closed. On the question, those in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the motion is agreed to. Those in favor of the gentleman from Allegheny County, Mike Terzai, for the office of Speaker of the House, will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and Mike Terzai is unanimously elected Speaker of the House. Congratulations. The chair appoints the gentleman from Indiana County, Mr. Reed, and the gentleman from Allegheny County, Mr. Dermody, to escort Speaker-elect Mike Terzai to the rostrum. The committee to escort the Speaker-elect will proceed with the performance of its duties. The chair recognizes the chairman of the committee, Mr. Reed. Thank you very much, Mr. Chief Clerk. I have the honor of presenting my friend and our speaker-elect, Mike Terzai. Thank you. The oath of office to the Speaker-elect will now be administered by the Honorable D. Michael Fisher, Judge, Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit, 
and a former member of the House. Members and all guests, please rise as able for the oath of office. One second. Okay, let me get off here. Come right through the front and stand on the other side of Judge Fisher. Okay. And then Mom's going to come right up here with us. Yeah, right up here. Come on. Thank you. And then come on. Good. As the Turzai family is getting positioned up here, uh, let me just say congratulations to all of you and what an honor it is uh, for me to be back here. Forty years ago uh, today, I was being sworn into my uh, second term as a member of the State House, sitting back there in the back row. Little did I ever think that I would get up here to the podium and be in a position uh, to swear in the Speaker. But uh, as I did two years ago, I'm back here for the second time to swear in the Speaker, a person who I've been a friend of for many, many years. His father taught me in grade school. Uh, I had the, my wife and I had the pleasure of going out with Lydia and Mike on their first date. I've seen their family grow up. I've seen him do what he has done so ably for the people of Allegheny County and for the people of Pennsylvania. And I'm very pleased to be here today to be able to administer the oath of office. So with that, Mr. Speaker, would you please place your left hand on your Bible and raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Mike Terzai, do solemnly swear I, Mike Torsai, do solemnly swear that I will support, obey, and defend that I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth and the Constitution of this Commonwealth and that I will discharge and that I will discharge the duties of my office the duties of my office with fidelity with fidelity Congratulations, Mr. Thank Speaker. You, Thank you, Dr. Thank you very much. You thought I forgot my first page, huh? Thank you, Dr. Thank you. You can come right this way. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. -a. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Manny T. Love you. David, thank you so much. I, I, thank you. I still have one more part. <laughs>
on the road so that he can spend time with his family. His wife Lydia and his three sons are truly the fuel that keeps him going and the glue that holds him together. So it's an honor and a pleasure for me today to return to this chamber to offer my congratulations on his re-election as Speaker of the House of Representatives and to present the gavel with my best wishes to my friend Mike Torzai. Please take your seats. Thank you so much. Quite an honor. First of all, welcome to this august chamber. And before I um, introduce some folks and thank some folks, I have to start with the list of, of very important dignitaries that we are so honored as a group to have in our chamber from other branches of government. First of all, the Honorable Governor of Pennsylvania, Tom Wolf. Thank you so much, Governor. Please rise. Please rise. I speak for all of us, Governor, that we are so honored that you would take the time to be with us on this special day. From the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, a longtime friend, an outstanding jurist, Justice Deborah Todd. Justice Todd, thank you, my dear. With respect to the governance of Pennsylvania, as you know, there are three very important, we, we in the press and, and in the public domain call them row offices. They have such important responsibilities. I'm going to introduce each of them uh, individually, beginning with Auditor General Eugene D. Pasquale. General. <laughs> One of our former colleagues here in the House of Representatives. Attorney General-elect, Josh Shapiro. Josh, thank you. Josh, too, served with us here in the House of Representatives. And Treasurer-elect, Joe Torsella. Joe, thank you. Former Speaker of the House, Robert O'Donnell, is present with us today. Speaker O'Donnell. And from my home county, uh, the outstanding Allegheny County Chief Executive, Rich Fitzgerald. Rich. It is my understanding that um, former member Gordon Linton is present with us today. And um, he is the guest of Representative Chris Rabb. He also served as the Federal Transit Administrator from 1993 to 1999. Representative Linton. Thank you. We had a distinguished group from both sides of the aisle sit on a swearing-in day committee to help us in terms of the cost of today's celebration and also to make sure that it was such a lovely day for our friends and family. Would these individuals please rise after I call your name and we'll hold our applause till after the entire group has been announced. Jean Barr, Sil Lukwit, Wendy Hoslinger, and Matt Smith, please rise. Thank you so much for being with us today. Now, I think what, what's really exciting 
and, and I realize it's the first day of school for many of our, uh, many of our kids uh, after the holiday uh, break, the Christmas break. But I, I think it would be great, because um, I have three kids here. If any of the kids or grandkids of the legislators or nephews and nieces are here, could you please stand and get a, 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 a show of support from all of us? We're so excited to have you here. To each and every one of you, daughters and sons, granddaughters and grandsons, nieces and nephews, you should be so proud of your, of your mom, dad, grandma, grandfather, aunt, uncle today for being sworn in to represent citizens in the oldest legislative body, some say in the Americas. They are doing great work and they couldn't do it without your love and support. So thank you for being here today. Now, we had some outstanding folks working on this beautiful day for all of us, and, and I, I must just uh, thank them, including uh, another family member of mine, not really by blood, but uh, just a great friend. Lydia and I are godparents to her Oldest, uh, Mary, uh, age seven, Sarah Kennedy. Sarah, if you could stand. Karen Coates, our chief of staff. Kelly Fidelli, who handles the protocol for the chamber. Kelly. Jen, where's Jen, her right hand assistant? Is Jen here? Um, and then we also have uh, Clancy, the speaker, who, who knows all the history behind each and every item that we do here, Clancy Meyer. <laughs> Steve Miskin, Candace, Lisa, Lisa, and Lori, Lori Lachetto. I hope she's on the floor, where's Lori? Lori, thank you so much for all that you've done, dear. We love you. Now, folks, I know um, I have to personally thank Mike Grease, Tina Pickett, just thank you for those un the truly kind words, Harry Reedshaw, a man really with a vision of this institution, a positive vision of this institution, John Lawrence, and Curtis Thomas. Curtis, who was so kind to call me up to ask to uh, offer one of the nominations, and uh, I had asked him if he would, would do the the, the courtesy to this institution to close the nominations. To Judge Mike Fisher, what an outstanding jurist and career this man has had. House of Representatives, State Senate, Attorney General, and Third Circuit, and I know his lovely daughter Michelle is with him today. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for being with us again, my good, good friend. <laughs> Judge Craig Daly, Without a doubt, one of the most talented legislators and, and, and one of the most camaraderic. Such a good friend to many. I saw his other very good friend, I hope she's in the well of the house, Julie Harhart here today, and uh, maybe even Sandy Major. Uh, Judge Daly, thank you for swearing in this, uh, your, your former colleagues. Uh, we, we love having you here from Northampton County. Dick Stevenson, a man of real principle. He and his wife, Sue, uh, friends to so many people across Pennsylvania to drive out from uh, the uh, really distinguished town of Grove City, the home of Grove City College. Dick, thank you for your kind words. And Dave Redicliffe, thank you for doing an outstanding job in um, this role, your first opportunity to do so as Chief Clerk for the House of Representatives. Thank you. If you'll bear with me, I know I, I did this two years ago, but. Um, with, with much pride, I, I do have to once again just uh, introduce my, my lovely family. Um, my wife, Lydia, first, please. Lydia, if you could please stand. She always looks so great. She and her family and our family have weathered some, some uh, 
sad times this year, but Lydia is just uh, a principled, loving, tough when needed to be, mom and, 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 and wife, uh, a pediatrician. Uh, folks, I, I, I swear, amongst your other keys, make sure your spouse is a, somebody really well-liked in the community. It really helps. Um, so any of your faults can sometimes be forgiven if you have a great spouse. Um, and uh, Lydia is that. I, I can't tell you how many, I guess I even still knock on doors. I knock on doors and they're like, oh, we love your wife. Uh, she sees our kids. And I say, oh my goodness, thank goodness. Um, <laughs> uh, Lydia herself was uh, served on the Allegheny County Health Department under a Republican and Democrat uh, chief executive. And uh, while she was not a delegate this year to the convention, she's been a delegate in the past. Um, and uh, just a, an, outstanding, an outstanding lady in her own right. Thank you, Lydia, for being here today. We love you. Uh, Andrew's our oldest. And uh, Andrew, if you could stand. I, I said, Andrew, uh, please make sure the gum's out of your mouth. Uh, and he said, Dad, really? You got to give me an order already? Uh, this young man uh, just finished his football season, varsity football player, and became an Eagle Scout right before his 18th birthday, for those of you who know what that is. <laughs> served on our school board, uh, serves on student council, ready to begin varsity baseball, and then he's graduating, and uh, we're going to miss him. Uh, I, I sometimes get teary-eyed already. For those of you that have already had uh, somebody leave your house, I still get teary-eyed, or maybe you're like me with a senior. And then I sometimes say, oh my goodness, I, I, I'm going to so miss our conversations where Andrew gets to yell at me and I get to yell back. Um, <laughs> he, he is really uh, just an outstanding young man. And, and Andrew, thank you for being here today, buddy. <laughs> Stephen, Stephen Torzai. This good man, uh, now Andrew's at North Allegheny, um, graduates about 700 kids a year at public school. Stephen is actually at Vincentian Academy, a local um, Catholic school in my district, and uh, his school graduates about 75 kids a year, so it's quite a contrast. Stephen is a baseball pitcher, let me tell you. That's, that kid thinks and uh, breathes baseball, and his team won the Class A state champs last year, and Stephen got to be a part of that, and I got to give you a round of applause for that, Stephen. Great job, my man. <laughs> He's watched Moneyball. If you haven't seen that movie, Moneyball, Stephen's watched that about 20, 30 times, and I don't have to worry about a career path for him. He wants to be, uh, you know, those guys that uh, run the organization and, like, pick and choose and draft players and let them go, like that Moneyball guy. And, um, and, and he is uh, also on honor roll, uh, and high honor roll, and um, is our only employed kid in the family. He's a lifeguard, which we love, because he brings money into the, into the coffers. He, we keep working on Andrew, but he keeps saying he's been too busy, but uh, outstanding. Stephen, thanks so much, buddy, we love you. Matthew, our, our youngest, we can't call him a baby anymore. He's gotten so big and just finished football season, is in the middle of basketball season at Marshall Middle School in North Allegheny, soon to do baseball. And um, unlike the others who clearly have steered away from the uh, government side, um, now Andrew's uh, on student council, I guess, but uh, Matt actually ran for president of his student body and, and won for Marshall Middle School. Uh, straight A student, still swims, an altar boy. Um, I gotta give you a quick story. The two boys were both on the altar church and Matt got a little heated. I don't know if any of you have ever done this in your services or mass. Got a little heated uh, up on the altar, ready to pass out. Stephen, good brother, right next to him, walks away from him. <laughs> Mom says, oh my God, Dad, couldn't he last a few more minutes? We were near the end. Uh, actually, they're very close, uh, you know, in, in good brother sense. Uh, Lydia and I, of course, ran up, and L Lydia actually knew what was going on and could help Matt out. Uh, but uh, Matt is really uh, just one of the most polite young men, I have to say. Just a, just a, a great young man, and, and we love him. Thank you, Matthew. And uh, my sister Becky, 
and my brother Terry. Uh, Becky's a nurse, Terry's a teacher, and Terry's also been a coach, and we love them, and thank you so much for being here today, uh, both of you. I know there are many great friends of all of ours, and um, we, we welcome each and every one of you, because this is an, an, a, a chance for optimism, right? Going into a new session isn't a negative thing, it's a positive thing. You know, us as, us as legislators, we're the only ones, the only one, I tell this to the classes too, I'm sure you do as well, tell it to the classes where I, I get to tell them about our, our, our roles and responsibilities, and I say, the governor can't introduce a bill, right? Nobody in that 65,000 people that we represent can introduce a bill. Nobody can vote on a bill. You, the members of the House of Representatives and our colleagues in the Senate, are the only folks in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania who can introduce legislation, who can vote on legislation, who can work to move legislation. The power that the people back home have given to me and to you together to change Pennsylvania is so significant and we can never take it lightly. I always tell the new members, be on the House floor. It's a privilege. It is a privilege to be able to vote on legislation, to speak on legislation, to advocate for it. You can change the direction of Pennsylvania. I know you know that, but the new members, don't forget the admonition. It's so important to remember. You can make a positive difference for the citizens of this great Commonwealth. I wanna hold up real briefly. This was the um, Holy Bible uh, that I was uh, able to be sworn in on today. I was so blessed. It contains the Old and New Testaments, obviously, and, and it was newly translated out of original tongues. And um, with marginal notes showing the scripture to the to be the best interpreter of that scripture. And it was printed in London by a gentleman by the name of Charles Bill. And it was the executrix of Thomas Newcomb deceased, printers to the king and most excellent majesty of 1698. But the importance of the, it was a book plate showing the ownership by William Penn, the founder of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania himself. If you have an opportunity, please feel free to come up and, and um, inspect each and every member this Bible owned once by the founder of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, William Penn. What a great honor. And I want to use a William Penn quote today. Speak properly. This is probably to me and I've already, I've already violated it. <laughs> Speak properly and in as few words as you can, but always plainly. I think I got that part right. For the end of speech is not ostentation, but to be understood. I think we have such great opportunities in front of us as a body. The majority party does have an obligation to govern. And the minority party has an obligation to participate and be a part of moving legislation forward. And we are each and every one of us members without regard to party, Republican and Democrat, as we serve here in the House of Representatives. There are so many important issues for us to take on. In looking back over the past session, some very important pieces of legislation that so many of you worked on with the governor and with members on both sides of the aisle. We, in the, um, in, in, in terms of moving forward, we actually, since 2010, 2011, I wanna give you these numbers, I wanna make sure I have them correct, have increased since the 2010-11 budget, spending on state dollars for those with intellectual disabilities by 67.3%, almost $2 billion in funding, and the key there is, is we need to get more individuals off those waivers and into these particular services that we have been putting front and center because what it says is that each and every Pennsylvanian is a person of dignity. In the city of Philadelphia, we have about 25,000 to 30,000 students plus those across the Commonwealth 
who would still like to have an opportunity to maybe go to a charter school, a type of a public school. And we have to continue to improve our public schools where most of the students in the Commonwealth um, are educated. I think there's an opportunity like we did before when we did the compromise on the local cigarette tax, but we also put a provision in that put a, an, a, an, a, a provision to actually uh, have a formal application process and an appeals process. 7,000 kids were added to those charter schools as a result of that compromised legislation. Sherelle Parker, who is now on the city council, uh, was a leader on that with uh, John Taylor and myself. We have an opportunity with respect to the Educational Improvement Tax Credit and the, uh, and the um, Opportunity Scholarship Tax Credit to make sure that, that students in Philadelphia, by way of example, at the Independence Mission Schools, one I recently toured with St. Thomas Aquinas, where Nicole Unegbu was the principal, children of all backgrounds and faiths who had an opportunity to wear that uniform and to be safe. And we have an opportunity to expand that, and that has always been a bipartisan opportunity with respect to making improvements for education so that each and every child has an opportunity to find his or her place. With respect to the budget, we found ways to meet our obligations while holding the line on broad-based taxes. We've reduced debt. We have more to do. We have to make sure that there's family-sustaining jobs for each and every Pennsylvanian, and energy independence is a, is a significant part of that opportunity to provide those family sustaining jobs. We as a group moved the sale of wine to the private sector, moving Pennsylvania into the 21st century. We've made sure that we have all time highest spending on public education in the history of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And, and um, we, I know that some of us just agreed on, on the approach, uh, but there's going to be those who suffer from epilepsy or PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, who are gonna have the opportunity to get some medicines, and hopefully we're gonna do that to make sure it gets right to them, to make their lives ever better, and to make sure that we do not increase the, the problem of uh, drug abuse in, in this Commonwealth. On those lines, we, as a group, did some land, land um, Mark bills with respect to freeing Pennsylvania citizens from opioid addiction. And uh, all of that was member driven in contact with the folks back home, knowing what's in front of us and making sure that we do the best job we can. There's gonna be disagreements. We're gonna have different perspectives on certain issues, but more often than not, we're gonna be able to work together to move these important issues forward. I think of all the work we did on, on child abuse under uh, Kathy Watson and Mari Gingrich, by way of example, just outstanding legislation uh, that we did together. I think this session, 1718, is gonna be that kind of a session. I think each and every one of you are empowered to take hold of those important issues that you've learned about from your own experience in life and from back home. And we're gonna reach across the aisle and we're gonna get things accomplished. You have two outstanding leadership teams, two outstanding leadership teams, the Majority Leader Dave Reed, Minority Leader Frank Dermody, a new Appropriations Chair and Stan Saylor, Joe Markosik, one of our longest serving members with uh, great experience that, that, that they bring to the table, and all the other leaders of, 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 of these teams that will be introduced shortly. I, I think there's a great chance for, for, for continued success each and every one of us should be so optimistic. With that, I just wanna tell you, I'm so honored to hold this position of speaker. I hold it with high regard. I will continue to work every single day to show respect to each and every one of you and to make sure that any rulings that have to be made by the bench are done fairly and without regard to partisanship. I wanna end with this um, last quote from William Penn. Sense shines with a double luster when it is set in humility. An able yet humble man, and I will add and woman, is a jewel worth a kingdom. May God bless each and every one of you, and thank you for voting me in to hold this really important position of responsibility for this august chamber. Thank you.